The Bhagavad Gita is a book of mankind's collected experience of and answers to life's most basic questions. Who I am? From where do I come? What is my purpose and destiny? And most practically, how do I find happiness? These podcasts originate in the lectures of Neil Bhatt, a disciple of Swami Chinmayananda. They are presented here in 20 to 30 minute segments, each covering three of the Gita's 701 verses. Welcome to Gita Wisdom for Daily Living. We have been discussing chapter 10, Vibhuti Yoga, Yoga of Divine Glories. Bhagavan, in the beginning of the chapter, made two basic points. All these divine qualities which you see in beings such as Buddhi, Gnana, Asamoha, Samata, Ahinsa, Dana, Bhaya, Abhaya, all these qualities emanate from me because of my presence in them that they manifest these qualities. So whenever you see these qualities, know that I am present in that being. So that is one point. And then he said that aham sarvasya prabhavaha mattaha sarva pravartade. There is nothing that is not based in me. I am the source of all things and being and everything proceeds from me. So Bhagavan has made it very clear that there is nothing which is devoid of him. But Arjuna obviously wanted to get examples in his world which he can relate to. So that, that's what he said, Keshu Keshu Bhavesu Chintyo Asi Bhagavan Maya. In what different forms that I see in this world which I can worship as your present. If I have to find examples of divinity which are worthy of worship, tell me how do I find them? How do I recognize them? And how do I approach them? Therefore, Bhagavan said that when you see anything which is best among that category, consider that's worthy of worshipping. Excellence is worthy of worshipping. Yoga karmasu kaushalam. Kaushalam, the proficiency is worshipable. Anything which is efficient and proficient, Bhagavan said, consider that is my manifestation, it is worthy of worship. So therefore, Bhagavan has been giving various examples of best among those categories. And we have seen so far, as Swamiji explains, that Bhagavan started with Vedic examples, based, rooted in the culture of Vedic period. And then he has given some examples which are common between Vedic and Puranic period. And then he has been giving examples from Puranic period. In other words, he is covering all that Arjuna has experienced. Ancestral past, folklore, and then also the day-to-day world where I'm trying to find divinity. I've tried to find divinity in my great culture. I also try, try to find divinity in the folklore which I've heard from people. And I also try to find divinity in my world. Verses 27, 28, 29 continues in that tradition. We are seeing more Puranic examples. The Uchehi Sava. Sam Aswanam, Vidhimam Amrutod Bhavam. Among the horses, am Uchashrava, which came out of this endeavor of finding nectar. It is the story of churning of the milky ocean to find nectar, immortality. But byproduct of that effort, we can call it Riddhi and Siddhi. Swamiji explains here, this churning of ocean is nothing but churning your own mind. One side is bad and other side is good thoughts. Bad thoughts and good thoughts are churning your mind. What comes out of it are the byproducts are called riddhi and siddhi. 
when we try to achieve the final goal of liberation or immortality or ultimate happiness, which we want to call it, we are constantly churning our mind to find the ultimate happiness. In that process, we achieve some accomplishments, we acquire things. Those are Siddhi and Riddhi. We get along our pursuit of happiness. We have not got the happiness yet, but we get some things which are byproduct of our pursuit of happiness. So me buying a BMW or Avni and Maulik going to Hawaii. You people went to Hawaii and I bought a BMW X5 hybrid over the weekend. So we covered two bases of my Vedantic journey. Now you have to go to Starbucks to complete the third leg of it. <laughs> All that is in pursuit of happiness. I want to be happy, that's why I want to go to Hawaii. I want to be happy, that's why I want to buy BMW. But that is not the end goal, Bhagavan says. The end goal is to find the nectar. The nectar is endless happiness. Without any break in it, that is what we call immortality. That is also what we call liberation, we call moksha. So this churning of ocean, Vidhi Maam Amrutod Bhavam, this flying horse came out of this pursuit of happiness as an excellent achievement from the pursuit of finding something else. They were not looking for flying horse. They were looking for nectar. But what came out? Flying horse. The best among the horses. We become excellent in our profession. That what actually was the goal. I want to be happy. I want to make more money. Then I became very proficient in my profession. We consider, unfortunately, that is the goal. That was never was my goal. My goal was to be happy. But I sometimes become so enamored by my own achievement that I just stop right there. That I'm, I'm the best. So Bhagavan said, Among horses, the flying horse which came out of the churning of ocean. Airavatam Gajendrana, both came out of the same pursuit. The white elephant with many tusks came out of Airavat and Ucheshrava, the flying horse, came out. they both came in the same pursuit of finding nectar. The Airavat was given to Indra, That's but the horse was given to Daitya. But both came out as excellent examples of something you can accomplish by your pursuit of finding nectar, bliss. Naranamcha Naradhipa. Among men, I am the king. Among men, when somebody becomes as powerful as one can be, he's called king. Airavat is an example among elephants, among horses. So in all living beings, you find example of excellence. In our culture, the king is considered divine representation. Not in only in our culture, but all Western cultures also. King was considered divine. He is the one who is supporting the whole kingdom by his own acts, and therefore he is considered divine. Anything that is excellent among men, among animals, among beings of any kind, considered to be my manifestation, is worthy of worshipping. Because the original question was, Keshu Kesu Che Bhavesu Chintyo Asi Bhagavan Ma. So Bhagavan is giving him various examples. Ayudhanam Aham Vajraha, not only being but things among the weapons and Vajra. Vajra was conceived by Indra as the weapon which can kill the demon Vrutrasu. He was the snake in a human form. The snake is generally considered poisonous. So something which is poisonous in stopping my progress, bad thoughts in my mind. So Vrutrasu is my negative tendencies. And to kill that, I need a weapon which is powerful and effective. So here Indra, to kill Vrutrasu, wanted Vajra, the ultimate weapon, to kill this demon who was stopping the course of rivers. So he was someone who was stopping the progress. So Vrutrasu can be only be killed by something which is very pious and self-sacrificing. So the Indra found Dadhichi is the right candidate. He has all the positive qualities, selfless in his endeavors. And when Dadhichi was approached, he agreed to give up his body and then his 
bones were used to make this vajra. The meaning of this metaphor is, if you have to kill the negative tendencies of your mind, you have to sacrifice. Selfless sacrifice is the only sure weapon to kill the negativity in your mind. Of all the weapons to kill your negativity, Bhagavan said, I'm Vajra. Denunam Asmi Kamaduk. Among cows, I am Kamaduk. I am that milch cow. The milch cow was also described in chapter 3 in verse 10, where Bhagavan said, Sahayagna Prajasrustva Purovacha Prajapati. Anena prasi vistadvam isacha astu iste kamadhuk. At the beginning, Prajapati said, I have created Praja and the same time Yagna. This Yagna will be your Kamadhen. This Yagna will be your cow which fulfills all your desires. So the Kamadhenu is something which has capacity to fulfill all your desires. And as per Purana, Vasista had this Kamadhen. Vasista had this cow. This cow which can give whatever you desire, like a genie in other Arabic tale. Whatever you desire, genie can present. Bhagavan said, Kamadhenu is your cooperative endeavors. The Yagna spirit, when you work together, when you combine your resources of your community, of your family, of your country, then you can get whatever you want. Dhenu namasmi kamadu. In our culture, cow is sacred because cow supports life. In olden days, cow provided everything. Cow provided milk for sustaining bodies. Cow also provided bullocks to till the land. Cow also provided cow dung for source of fuel. That cow dung was also a building material to plaster the floors. The cow has ultimate giving capacity that it can sustain life. And therefore, cow is considered sacred. But among all cows, Bhagavan said, I am Kamadhuk, I am Kamadhenu, which has capacity to fulfill all desires. And as Bhagavan has said in chapter 3, Kamadhenu is your yagna spirit. When you work selflessly and work together, you can fulfill all your desires. You know. Prajanascha asmi kandarpaha. Among the progenitor, I am kandarpa. I am that instinct to create progeny. This instinct, Bhagwan said, is divine. Normally, any sexual instinct, we consider it to be negative, not good. Our culture clearly says that's divine. Anything which is natural has to be divine. So this instinct to further your progeny is a divine instinct. Attraction for the opposite sex is put in beings by Bhagwan for a reason and therefore it is divine. Swami used to say that if you don't get attracted by opposite sex, go and see a doctor. There's something wrong with you. That is something natural and divine. It is how you use it, how you manage it, makes it either divine or devilish. Prajanas chasmi kandarpaha. Kandarpa is that innate attraction for the opposite sex in you. The Bhagavan says, I am that. Sarpanam asmi vasukihi. We have discussed two types of snakes, sarpa and naga. Sarpa is the unhooded snake. Hooded snake is naga. Snakes like pythons and other garden snakes. And they are not many times poisonous. Python can kill you, but it's not poisonous. Cobra is a naga. There's a naga panchmi day, at least in Surat where I grew up. All these guys will bring cobra in, in their little basket. And my mother will offer milk and give some donation. Naga, cobra is poisonous. But Bhagwan said even that poisonous instinct in beings is also divine. Because there is no other source for this poison instinct than God alone. Everything in this world, even though it seems negative from our perspective, when you change the perspective, it becomes natural and necessary. I very recently read an article, I think in New York Times, 
forest fires are necessary for the survival of the forest. Now that was complete revelation to me because every time I see forest fire in California on the TV, I say, why can't they do something? Why can't they not figure out how to stop this thing or what is the purpose of this? And it really opened my eyes that that article says that without forest fire, forest cannot survive because the undergrowth will be so dense, the trees won't survive. The forest fires clean up the forest every year. Now, obviously, out of control, anything creates disasters. And most of the forest fires are man-made or man-created. They are not naturally created. So anything which I see negative may have been over manipulated by someone. But the actual phenomenon, whether it seems negative or positive, my perspective is natural and divine. So therefore he says, Sarpanam Asmi Vasuki. Among serpents and Vasuki. Vasuki is the smallest snake on Shiva's finger also used as the rope in churning the ocean. So that flexibility. And Vasuki also selflessly volunteered to become that rope to churn the ocean. Among snakes and Vasuki, who gives his services selflessly for the common good. Anantaha cha asmi naganam. And among nagam, ananta. Ananta, endless. Another name of ananta, nagas, sheshanag. We have seen Vishnu lying on the sheshanag in a slumber. Lakshmiji massaging his feet and the lotus coming out of his navel and Brahmaji sitting on it. So this thousand hooded snake is nothing but my mind. It has thousand different desires in thousand different directions. With that capacity, when it is associated with tamas and rajas, it has creative urge. Churning of my mind with various desires, supported by my own consciousness and my rajasic tendencies, propels me to create things. I want to do this, and I want to do that, and I want to design this, I want to create this. All these things are divine expression of supreme being. So this iconic image, Brahma, sitting on the lotus, which represents creative urge in every being. This mind which is controlled by Vishnu can create things, you know. So therefore Bhagavan said, Anantas Chasmi Naganam. Among all hooded serpents, I'm ananta, endless expressions. Varuno yadasam aham, I'm varuno among the water deities. In Vedic time, each natural element was governed by the associated deity, and Varuna was the deity of water. And Varuna is depicted sometimes as a half man and half fish in our Puranas. The five great elements were seen as natural phenomena for all the things and beings. And each one has to be controlled by some supernatural force. And therefore, each one had presiding deity. So Varuna is the deity of water. Water is essential for life. Pitrunam Arimacha Asmi. Among the ancestors... We always wonder what happens to people who die. That is the question which we do not have any answer. Even though we believe in reincarnation, even though we believe in continuity of the soul, but we don't really have an answer. So they basically conceived a place where all the departed souls go, which is the Pitruloka. Pitruloka is control of Aryama. Aryama is the third son of Aditi. So among 12 Adityas, Aryama is one of the Adityas. And he's supposed to enter the Pitrulog as the first person. So Pitrus are the souls which are departed. And as per our belief that body only dies, but the subtle body remains as an entity. That subtle body goes to Pitrulog. So the Pitrulok is a place where departed souls go. And the controller of that world is Aryama. 
from there what happens you have to believe in reincarnation yamaha samyatam aham among the controllers am yama the god of death so yama is to control this creation and destruction the creation and destruction has to be maintained in a balance so that prakriti can function if you buy something you have to throw something out otherwise if your house will not have any place to store things when i go to put the recycling bin outside we have a very moderate and manageable recycling bin the one which standard they give and generally half full it's not all full my neighbors recycling bins are overflowing and they actually have to use some special bin sometimes i figured out they throw away every they buy something the packages come they throw away the recycling we keep packages forever <laughs> for posterity you know so that even if my grand daughter has to return that item after 20 years not only have the item but also will have the packaging which came with it Therefore, our house is filled with boxes oh. of things which you have bought over the last twenty yeah, years. Right. But Bhagwan said that's not how it should be. It should be Yamaha Samyata Maham. I am the god of destruction, because without destruction there is no place for creation. We know for sure. In New York City or in Mumbai, to build another building, all you have to do is demolish the existing building. That's the only way you can create because there is no land left. you can generate land you know so bhagwan said i am that controller who controls the balance between destruction and creation i make way for the creator death is something uncontrollable by any human endeavor no matter how hard we try no matter what new medical advancement we will have death is certain either now 100 years from now Hundred twenty years from now, or even thousand years from now, you shall die. So Bhagwan said, "I am that controller, or Yama, among the controllers." With that, I'll stop right here. If you find this podcast helpful, please support it by donating any amount by going to the episode's website at neilbut. dot podbean. dot com or at chinmayarichmond.org thank you om sarve bhavantu sukhina sarve santu niramaya sarve bhadrani pashyantu ma kaschit dukha bhag bave om shanti 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 hari yo shri gurubhyo namaha hari yo